pretty sad update for you guys today. I was thinking of maybe skipping this, but at the same time, I don't want to skip it because I want you guys to be aware and obviously you're going to have questions later on. So it's good to just be transparent, I feel like, and just share things. Even if it's emotionally draining and difficult for me, I want to keep you guys updated. And at the same time, I wanted to turn this video into education because it was a learning lesson and I just feel like it can bring some awareness to other people um, when it comes to naturalistic backgrounds. Um, I feel like I made a mistake and it was something that I wasn't, I mean, I've, it, it was something I've never heard of before or seen happen because naturalistic backgrounds are kind of a new thing. I just started doing them within the past few years of reptile keeping and I say nothing but positive things about them because for the most part they're amazing. Um, but there can be some things that are problematic about it. And so basically what happened is Flounder, my veiled chameleon, passed away. And I know that may seem so shocking because I literally just posted a reptile room tour video and he was fine. And for the most part, he was fine and I think about a week after that he randomly just got really dehydrated and looked sick and then passed away a couple days after that and it was very similar to what happened to my panther chameleon around the same exact time last year Jurassic he got sick and just died and I didn't know what was wrong with him I was suspecting that he had some type of illness because he seemed mildly dehydrated but was still eating and still normal, but he had that going on for a while. So I, I never figured out what was wrong with him, but he definitely had some type of illness. Um, and I reused that enclosure with that background. I cleaned it out as best as I could, but there's only so much you can do with a naturalistic background. I put flounder in there. I had him for, it was under a year and all of a sudden out of nowhere it seemed like he got really sick and then passed away and so my thoughts are I think that he somehow got exposed to whatever Jurassic had previously in that enclosure through that naturalistic background so I don't know exactly what the illness was when chameleons get sick typically they show signs of illness way too late and it's usually at a point of no return and they pass fairly quickly once they start showing those symptoms of being sick. So unfortunately, that's what happened. And um, yeah, so I wanted to just take a minute and talk about naturalistic backgrounds and the pros and cons just for education and to bring more awareness about them. I feel like they are a new thing to the reptile hobby and I absolutely love them. But there are cons to them as well and just things to be aware of if you're making one for your reptile. So I'm going to try to breeze past all of this. I don't want to get super emotional and think about flounder. So we're going to turn this into education and just talk about the naturalistic backgrounds because it was a learning lesson that I took away sadly from this heartbreaking situation. So we're going to start off with the pros of naturalistic backgrounds just to have a little bit of happiness. Um, so there are so many pros to naturalistic backgrounds. I love doing them myself and I love seeing when you guys set them up for your reptiles as well. Um, some of the pros for them are that they offer enrichment for your reptile allow more climbing opportunities for your reptile, especially if you have a snake or even like a gecko. My leopard gecko uses the naturalistic background to climb on it and loves it. So it's a great way to add more climbing elements to your enclosure, which will offer more enrichment. Of course, you're gonna be adding a new texture and a new smell. You can put moss on it, you can put dirt on it. There's so many different things that you can do and be creative when creating a naturalistic background for your reptile. And all of those different things that you're gonna be adding to it can add enrichment for your reptile. Another great thing about them is that they add a texture that isn't super sharp or rough, but it's still rough enough for snakes in particular to rub their shed off. So if you have a reptile that's shedding, trying to get that skin off, the naturalistic backgrounds really can help them with that as well. It's like a really nice rough but soft surface that's safe for them to rub against. Another component that's positive about naturalistic backgrounds 
um, depending on how you make it. If you make it putting substrate on it, it can help to increase the humidity of your enclosure because when you're spraying down the enclosure, it'll latch onto that dirt and it'll moisten up a little bit and increase that humidity throughout your enclosure. I find that this is helpful, especially if you have a large enclosure because a lot of the times people just put substrate on the bottom and there's just a lot of bare space that they have trouble cr increasing humidity unless you completely deck it out with plants that fill it out, that's super helpful. Um, but the naturalistic background, if you do it on all of the surfaces around the perimeter and you're spraying that down, that's gonna help increase and maintain the humidity within that entire setup. Obviously, they're aesthetically pleasing. So not only for you, for your reptile, like they just make the enclosure look naturalistic and it just takes it to another level. So obviously looking at an enclosure that has a naturalistic background compared to like a bare tank, it's just going to look so much better. So obviously that's gotta be a pro. Another thing that I really like about naturalistic backgrounds is that it helps you be able to put branches in place. Um, as well as fake plants, you can just shove it into the foam and it's, it's really sturdy. It'll actually hold it in place. Um, so that's something that I really, really like about it because using command hooks and stuff can work for fake plants, but it doesn't really work for branches. So using spray foam and making that naturalistic background really, really helps with branches, which will help you increase more climbing opportunities for your reptile within that setup and just help fill the whole enclosure out as well. So those are all of the pros to having a naturalistic background. Now we're gonna talk about some of the cons. Some of them are pretty obvious, but if you've never done it before and you're still contemplating if you wanna do it, um, it's just things to keep in mind. So the first thing is that they they can be a lot of work. Um, it's not something that's very easy. You need to at least take like two to three days um, and plan ahead of time when doing it because not only is it a lot of work, but it also takes a long time. The spray foam is gonna have to dry for an entire 24 hours, and then you're gonna have to carve it out how you want it to be. And then depending, there's different things that you can do. You can either apply silicone and then dirt and substrate to it or moss, or you can paint it and you can use um, the dry lock paint mixed with the different colors. So those are the two methods that I have done. I love both of them and both of them take a long time to dry because you're gonna have an extra 24 hours to wait for either the silicone to dry or for the paint to dry. So, and all of those things, keep in mind, you need to wait. I have had people message me before who um, didn't let the spray foam sit long enough and then the whole thing was like falling off. You don't want that. You need to wait. You need to make sure that gravity is in your favor. You can't start tipping the enclosure and hoping that it'll dry right. It has to be completely on the ground as it's drying. Um, so little things like that from trial and error that I've noticed people have issues with. Um, but yeah, it requires a lot of patience and a lot of work, but I think that it is absolutely worth it. But a lot of people just don't like the idea of having to wait or they're on a time crunch because they're getting their animal. Whatever the case is, it's good to be aware naturalistic backgrounds are going to take time to do. And the main con of this entire video and something that I've been asked about a lot when it comes to naturalistic backgrounds is how to clean them. And what sucks is that with naturalistic backgrounds, there's only so much you can do to clean them, especially if you have like dirt and moss all over them. That's not a surface that you can just spray and wipe down, unfortunately. So for the most part with all of my naturalistic backgrounds, the animals typically don't go to the bathroom on any of the walls, which is really nice. Um, so they do stay for the most part clean. They aren't just like covered in poop and gross things. They, they're typically just, they're fine how they are. However, if you have an animal that's sick and can somehow infect that background, there is really no way for you to completely sanitize it. And at that point, from what I have learned, the best thing to do would be to completely tear out the entire background and make a new one and start from scratch just to be safe. And I wish that that's what I did with my chameleon. 
because I cleaned out the entire enclosure as much as I could and then I really I sprayed down the naturalistic background but I couldn't like wipe it or scrub it and I was using reptile safe vinegar and water it wasn't anything too intense so if you have a reptile that is sick with something contagious or really bad or you're not even aware of what it is it's not a good idea to put another reptile in that enclosure um, with that same background that was used. So unfortunately, that is the mistake that I made with Flounder and I think that he got exactly what Jurassic had and that is what caused him to pass away. Um, so it's just a really, really hard lesson to learn but I wanted to just share the experience with you guys and bring some awareness to it in case you go through something similar or you just have a sick reptile and you're thinking about replacing um, the enclosure with a new reptile, just something to be aware of because I've never heard of this talked about before when it comes to naturalistic backgrounds and reusing enclosures. So it was something new for me and a terrible way to learn about it. Um, but I hope that this can save someone else and just, you gotta be careful. Just if you have a new reptile put, you're putting in, just tear out the entire background. At this point, I feel like that enclosure is cursed and I am throwing the entire enclosure out. I will not be using that ever again. And sometimes if you want to be safe like that, may that's also an option. Um, so yeah, I hope that this was helpful in some way. I'm really sorry to share the sad news with you guys. Um, again, it's just, it's heartbreaking and it's really hard to deal with and I'm feeling really guilty because it was my decision to reuse that enclosure and I had in the back of my mind the thought of like the background could be an issue because the one animal was sick but I just hoped it wouldn't be an issue and here we are today and it's just a terrible terrible lesson to learn. So that is the sad update. Hopefully this can help someone or prevent someone from going through a similar situation but that is today's video. I will see you guys in the next one. Thank you guys so much for being here today.